Okay, so first one is going to be down the road to that. So just stand up again. In front of those walls, door, whatever you've got. We're going to go for a lunch stance to start with. One foot from the other, and that front foot's going to be nice and flat. Okay, from there, bring one hand in contact with the wall or door, whatever you do. Make the fist, get one side of the fist in contact with the front foot, and then bring the foot to the other side. Okay, from there, with the hand outside the leg, I will press my knee straight with my toe, keep my foot flat. I will say my knee can touch the wall or door. Okay? If that's easy, good, you're going to come up fist and a thumbs distance away from the wall. Okay, so again, make sure your foot stays flat, be tracking straight with your toe, and then you're trying to get your foot as far away from the wall as you can, making sure that knee can still touch the wall. Okay? So just test that on each side, figure out how far away you can get. And then we're swap over and then we'll rest. Okay, again, no need for pressure on this one. Just track the knee over the toe get as far as you can and then you can rest up. Okay, try and remember how far away you got with your foot, so whether it was a fist distance away from the wall or door, or if it was a fist and thumb, or fist and more than that. Okay, so we're going to go back and test that once we stretch up more. Okay? So next one is going to be working on that dorsal flexion. Okay, so the first one is going to be general and then we will look more specific to each one of you. Okay, so from the same set just again, so from that one stance, one foot in front of the other, that foot's going to be flat. And then you bring both hands over my knee, press my knee over my toe, and allow that knee to just come about an inch off the floor now. Okay, again, I'll go to get our knee further over our toe that we got in that growth test. Okay, so just slight press on top of that knee, knee tracks over the toe, press until you find that stretch through the angle, and then you knees off, relax, and then come back. Okay, you're going to do that five times on each side. Again, take your time, you're going to find that stretch, find that same point, pause for a second, and then it's up. Okay, remember, you can let that heel come off the floor just a couple inches there. Okay, so just apply as much pressure on top of your knee as you need, just to try and increase that range slightly. Good, find that sting point, pause for a second, you've got five on each side. So make sure your knees tight straight on the toe, keep it nice and specific to our squat. I think we're creating the same angle you're going to find in the bottom of our squat as we press our knees over our toes. Good team. So make up those five reps and then you can rest in this. Nice work. Okay, if you're still working, just make up those five reps here, and I'm going to talk through our next one. Okay, very similar to what we just did, we're going to do the same thing. So, around our ankles, we're going to that dorsal flexion, but this one's going to be a bit more specific to each one. Okay, we did this last one as well. So, if you're in that dorsal flexion stretch, so as your knee was going over your toe, track over your toe, if you felt that from the front of your ankle, what you're going to do is go for those ankle distractions. Okay, so again, I do think we'll do this in the gym with a band wrapped around the front of your ankle. Point your snout. All you're going to do is go from that same set position, bring both thumbs just to the top of your foot there. Okay, so where your shin slash angle meet with your foot, and then you're going to apply slight pressure and then let that knee track over the toe. Okay, all that's going to do is allow you to pressure your knee a little bit further over and reduce some of that strain in front of your ankle. Okay, so if you felt it through, just front the ankle there, you're going to move all your ankle distractions. If you felt it through the calf, slash through the back of the angle, we're going to go for some eccentric cross flexion. So again, you find yourself a raised surface, so a step, high of boots, wherever you can find. You're then going to come up, ideally you'll have support there, so if it's in front of a door, in front of a wall, whatever it may be, you're then going to come up onto your toe, get as tall as you can, and then control that descent 
all the way down, and then your knee slightly flex attack of your toe. Okay, so if you fell down more through your calf, you can put up onto your toes on a raised surface. Again, grab the structure for you one, control yourself down, keeping that leg straight, and then once your heel comes in contact with the floor, you can then bend your knee and let it track over your toe. Okay, same again, you go for five on each side, regardless of which one you're going for, find that stretch, pause for seconds, and then ease off and back up to the top right. Okay, so if you felt within the front ankle, two thumbs just at the base of your foot there. If you felt it more through your calf, through the muscles, then through the back of the ankle, you're going to go for those eccentric muscles. Archie, what does this do again? Have you had a band or...? Relax. As you press your knee over your toe, you'll feel it's almost, I'm going to say a tendon, but a slight little bulge come out the front of the ankle. Yeah, mine are like really creepy. They like bulge out all the time when I do so that. In your thumbs there, once your ankle's relaxed, as your knee then tracks over your toe, it's just going to prevent that little lump from sticking out a little bit more. So you're trying to kind of keep that back? Yeah, so keep that back. That's going to disengage the ankle slightly and make it easier for your knee to go over your toe. Oh, okay. Weird. <laughs> I but feel like really fighting against it. <laughs> it's so strange. So it will be strange. It's just a slight pressure. And okay. then all you're doing is letting the ankle creep forward. Can you see that? It's like moving. Ooh. <laughs> So, look, so if you can, let your thumbs touch. Touch your thumbs? Okay. Yeah, so imagine you're trying to recreate what a band would do if you wrapped it around your ankle. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, yeah, and then press your knee over your toe. Okay. So that should just allow you a little bit more of a stretch than before. So again, five on each side, and then you can rest up. Okay, so we're going to do that once more now. I'll give you 30 seconds of rest. So I'll start that timer just now. If you're still working, that's fine. So give yourself a little bit of rest and then we'll go back to start five on each side. Okay, yeah, I would always start with that basic one. So front hands and knees, just press the knee over the toe. And then from there, you can make it a little more specific if you are feeling it a lot through the front of the ankle or through sort of calf in the back of the ankle. Okay, so when you're ready to go for five more reps on your side, again, taking your time, let that knee track straight over the toes, find that stretch, and then knees off. If you're going for one of those eccentrics, remember you can stand tall, come all the way down, let your heel touch the floor, and then flex the knee. Let your knee press over your toe just slightly and you'll feel that stretch out even more. Great team, just five on each side there, then you can rest up. Keep that control all the way through. You want to feel that stretch just to end the there. So on that you certainly can use the structure if you need it. Not focusing too much on stability here, we just want to feel that control of stretch all the way down. Get your heel in contact with the floor and then you can then flex that knee press over the toe.
Okay, so next one, we're going to move up to our hips and then a little into our quads as well. Okay, so first one is going to be our head stretch. Now, very similar to the lunge stretch that we do in the last two weeks. We're just going to make it a little part. Okay, so you're going to need either a bed, couch, footstool, or just a wall for this one. Okay, now we're setting up this one at the knees bench. So again, you can use whatever you need to. Again, it can just be a wall and you're going to bring it through. Okay, and from our lunge base, we're going to bring our back leg up onto whatever we're using. Okay, so it's box, bench, whatever you've got. Back leg, back foot is going to come up and just rest against that object there. Okay, you're then going to come into that lunge base, get your chest full, let your hips come forward then. Okay, you should feel that stretch heavily all the way through the flexion of the back leg. Okay, so through the front of that leg. Okay, so again, back foot should be flush against the bench, box, whatever you're using. And then our chest is tall, hips are going to come forward, let them sink down. You should feel a pretty intense stretch here. Okay, so once everyone's found that, we're going to go for 30 seconds, five seconds, we're going to push forward, get as far into that stretch as you can, and then we're going to relax for five seconds. Okay, stay in that lunge base. We're going to go forward for five seconds, press and sit as far as we can, and then relax the time. Okay, if you're feeling this too much on your knee, you grab yourself a pillow to put off, or blanket, and then wash underneath that back. Okay? Now everyone looks set up in that position there. If you're all ready, we'll go in three, two, one, off you go. So press those hips forward, get as far as you can, and then relax. Stay in that base, just let your leg back slide, slightly, and then press it back in again. Get your legs as far through as you can, keep that chest full, and relax. Back in, get as far through as you can, squeeze the glute of the leg you've got back, and relax there. Okay, last time, kick through, get as far in that stretch as you can. Okay, and then relax. Two, one. Okay, you come out of that stretch now. We're going to swap sides and then we'll the same thing again. Okay, so back foot is going to be flush against whatever object you're using. Bring that front leg forward. Again, points for our lunge there. Chest is going to be tall. As we stretch forward, we're squeezing the glute of the leg we've got back. So my left leg is back. I'm going to squeeze my left glute as hard as I can. Okay, and then let those hips in forward. Keep that chest up. Okay, everyone looks set up there. We'll go in five seconds. Same again, press forward for five, and then we'll relax. Three, two, one. Okay, press hips forward. Keep that chest up. Okay, relax there. Press forward as far as you can. Squeeze that back glute. And relax. Each time you should be creeping about an inch further forward. Press forward. Keep that chest tall. Okay, relax there. When you're ready, press forward again. Get those hips as far through as you can. And relax, go for one more. Press it through. Get as far into that stretch as you can. Okay, now relax the last time. Two, one. Okay, come out of that stretch here. So I'll give you 30 seconds rest, and then we'll go for that again. Okay, is everyone feeling that through the back leg? So it should be through the front of the hip, and then slightly through your quad as well. Oh. So much in the quad. Yeah. <laughs> again, a little more intense than the lunges that we were going through the last two weeks. But again, great one for those hip flexors. That'll make it a little easier to keep those hips tracking back and down in the better squat. Okay, so you've got about 15 seconds left for your rest. And then we'll go for that one again. When you say come forward, Archie, is it like trying to like really tuck the like pelvis under? Or are we trying to like get uh, forward here? Torso should be upright and then squeezing your glute will help with that as well. So we're not yeah. trying to pull back too much. It's tension from my hip all the way up to my torso. Okay, okay. and then yeah. next, next through making sure I keep that upright angle. Okay? Okay. So I'll give you 10 seconds to get yourself back into that lunge 
and we'll go for the same thing again. Okay, five seconds, press as far through as you can, and then you can then relax for five. Okay, three, two, one, five seconds, press as far through as you can. Okay, and relax there. Press it through again. Increase that range of counts by a couple inches and relax. Okay, press through again. Just remember, squeeze that glute, keep that core tight. And relax. Very far relax. Press it through. Get your hips as far through as you can. Okay, and then last five, relax there. Okay, and then you can come out of that lunge. So I'll give you about 10 seconds to swap legs there. Almost five seconds, we're trying to get that back leg as far through as we can, press on it forward and down. But remember, keep that glute squeeze, keep that core tight, keep that torso up right. Okay, five seconds, and we'll go. Okay, three, two, one, off you go, press those hips through. Okay, and relax. Press it through again. Should be getting looser on the second time through. And relax. Press them through again. Keep that chest up. Let the hips sink forward. And relax. Okay, press them through last time. Get those hips as far through as you can. Okay, and then relax for five there. Okay, so hip flexors on there. So that's our couch stretch. Again, great one to do. If it is too much on your knees, you can go on to something like a couch and then get your foot up against that back, sort of up. Okay? So main focus here is stretching through the front of that hip and then through the quads as well. Okay? Now next one, we're going to go for a frog stretch. Now this one is quite tense, so we will go through a scale in a second if it is too much. Okay? Now we're set up here. Ideally, we're going to be just in our socks and we're coming from hands and knees again. Okay. Right. From here, I've got my shoulders over my hands and I'm going to my knees just slightly outside the hole. Okay? Now, from there, I'm trying to get the inside my foot flat on the floor. Okay, so the arch of my foot should be flat, contact with the floor there, and my shin should be parallel. Okay? So, I'm going to try to get in that position there. Get those heels down towards the floor and then have a look back and make sure your shins are parallel to each other. Okay? Now from there, when we're ready to go, we're going to sink our legs as far back as we can. We're going to feel that stretch increase through the groin, through the adductors, and then we're going to go. Okay? So that's going to be option number one. If that's too much, just going to go for our usual adductor stretch. What we've been through the last couple weeks is just going to sat, get those feet pressed apart. Drive your kneecaps down and then you can release as far forward as you can. Okay, so if that frog stretch is too much, we're just going to go for the out, it's as you flat and flat. Okay, so pick one of those options, find one that works for you. If the frog stretch is too much, that's fine. We're going to go for this twice. So if it is too much, we can always revisit it on the second time. Okay, so find one that's going to work. And then if everyone's ready, we go in 10 seconds. If you go for that frog stretch, you're sinking your hips back, let that stretch increase, and then ease off. Okay, you're going to do that five times. If you're going for that seated adductor stretch, you're just going to hold it for 30 seconds. Okay, after the round times, guys, for frog stretch, you're going to let those hips sink back. You're trying to feel that stretch all through the inside of the hip. Okay? If everyone's ready, we'll go in three, two, one, off you go. So frog stretch, let your hips sink back. Feel that stretch through your groin, watch the find your stretch for possible second, and then it's off. Okay, do that five times. If you go for that seated adductor stretch, you've got about 10 seconds left of the move. Okay, seated adductor stretch, we'll rest in three, two, one. Guys, look for that frog stretch, just keep working, make up those five reps. Okay, sink your hips back. Find that stretch all the way through the groin, through those adductors. And then ease off once you find the stretch here. 
Play like this one. <laughs> I think this one is a good stretch. Yeah, feels good. So a good one, but a tough one. So fairly intense. Now watch me up those five reps on that frog stretch and just rest. Okay, so I'll give you 30 seconds rest and then we'll go for that again. If you're going for it, that seated out of the stretch, make sure you keep those feet nice and wide, drive your kneecaps through the floor, and then just hold that for 30 seconds. Frog stretch. Now, main focus is letting your sit sit down, keep those knees from apart, and then make sure shins are about to out of the way. So, either one, I'll give you about 15 seconds left from that rest. Rest. Okay, 10 seconds of Logan. Okay, three, two, one. Off you go. So, seated stretch. We're just going to hold that for 30 seconds, get your chest as low as the floor as you can. Frog stretch, let those hips sink back. Feel that stretch increase. Let's just find a partial second piece off and then we'll come back into it. Remember, you've got five reps in. So either stretch you're going for there, we should be feeling this all the way through the inside of the leg. Up through your abdomen, just through the inside of Okay, seated stretch, rest in three, two, one. Frog stretch, working there, make up those five reps. So again, both are pretty tough, but they're going to help with sitting into that squat, being able to drive our knees out, keep our knees out all the way down, all the way down. Okay? So, frog stretch time. Now we're going to move on to our T-spine, focusing on our shoulders as well for our next one. Okay? Now for this, we're going for our side line cross rotation. Okay? All over for there is lying on your sides. We're going to create right angles, scoot your legs there. So, form your neck, bring your knees right angle, form your knee, bring your shins right angle as well, and then push this to the floor. Okay, from that way, stand one arm, and bring that arm and shoulder flat onto the floor. Okay, now I find somebody face up, I drive my elbow down through the floor. Okay, from here, I'm going to bring that other arm, sat on top, getting me flat and lifting my hand. Okay, from there, I'm going to create a big arm circle, so I'm going all the way around. Keep that straight arm in contact with the floor, circling around, and then bring both shoulder blades together if I can, get my chest facing up, and then circle back. Okay? <laughs> so lying flat on the floor, one arm's going to be extended from there, stack the other arm on top, and then circle as far around as I can, squeeze my shoulder blades together, and then circle back. Okay, all the way through that, that extended arm should stay flat on the floor as well as the shoulder. Okay, so if you look the right side, the right shoulder is going to be staying pressing down through the floor. Same again, if you're on your left side, press your left shoulder down through the floor. Okay, now everyone have a little find that position, and then we'll then go through the Okay, so just have a look at the movement there, and make sure you can find the right position. So remember, right angles through your legs. Ah. Side, you're going to extend your right arm, bring it flat on the floor, and then stack the other arm on top. Okay, from there, it's just a big arm circle all the way around, squeeze your shoulders together, and then come back to the start. Okay, so you should be feeling that all the way through your chest, through your shoulder, and a little bit through your lat as well. Okay, so have a go at those reps. We'll start in a second, but just make sure you're comfortable with that movement first. Okay, so for this one, we're going for five reps on each side. I remember keeping that control, so what you set up? Always do that. You want to be feeling that stretch. So set up, make sure you stack your legs. One arm on top of the other. So the ball around. Keep that shoulder in contact with the floor. And then you can do your chest facing upwards, shoulders squeeze together, and then circle around. Okay, that's one rep, you're going to do five. 
So when you're ready, team, you can have those five reps there. Okay, so keep the arm in contact with the floor. Keep the arm that's moving straight as well. You're gonna circle all the way around. See if you can get your chest facing up. Squeeze your shoulders together. And then circle back. Good, so yeah, you should be feeling a good set, good chest through your shoulder, through that lat, and then up and middle back as well. Okay, go for five on one side, and then you go for five on the other. Make sure you keep that palm facing up on the extended arm. So if you're lying on your left side, the left palm is going to stay facing up towards the sky, and then same again if you're going for your right side. Okay. Oh, so cool. I love these noises, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> My right arm won't go right round. <laughs> you're trying to create as much of a circle as you can. If you need to bend the arm slightly or keep it a little bit higher up, you can do. Just oh. depending on how mobile the shoulders are just now. Archie, did you do half a circle or did you go a full circle? Up to you. So if you can get your arm all the way around, go for that. If okay. you're coming halfway around and then going back where you came is enough for stretch to stick with that. Okay. Oh, that was a nice one too. Plenty. Good, so five on each side and then you can rest. We're gonna go for two sets of that. Again, main place you should be feeling this is through the chest, through the shoulder, and then through the upper middle back as well. Okay, it's going to be nice and specific when we get into things like holding the bar over our heads and transport them to them. Okay, so rest as needed once you're through those five reps on each side in that first set. I recommend again about 30 seconds. And then we go for that again, five on each side. You should be able to keep your arm a little bit straighter, be able to get that shoulder down towards the floor a little bit quicker. And then we just finish off that rep squeeze those shoulders together, get that chest facing up, and then you can then come back to start. Good, so keep that control, keep forcing those shoulders down. Make sure that palm on the extended arm stays facing up towards the sky. Make up those five reps there, team. Good, so on those last couple reps, we force that shoulder blade down. Create as much of a stretch through that chest as you can. And then when you start, see if you can almost bring your hands together, get your elbows together as well to start off each one of those reps. Good, so make up those five on each side in that second set, and then you can rest up.
Good, okay, so make up those five reps there on each side. We're gonna talk through our next one. It's gonna be our last part of the mobility protocol before we then move on to our snaps. Okay, now we're gonna go for wall angels. So if you can, get yourself next to a wall or door, just a solid structure, and we're gonna go for wall angels here, okay? So, slow it on, get back to your legs, bring my feet as far away from me as I need to, to get my whole back in contact with my arm. Okay, so just now I've got boxes, so I'm not leaning against it too much. As I set up, I feel wherever they need to be to make sure that my lower back, upper back, shoulders, and neck should be in contact with the structure there. Okay, so drive that full spine from the tailbone up through the shoulders through the neck into the wall. Okay, now from there, I'm going to bring my arms up. Squeeze my shoulders together. Again, my lower back should still be pressed against the wall. And then I'm going to extend my arms. This should work up the wall there. Exhale at the top. Make sure that lower back is still driven through the wall. And then come back down into that side position. Squeeze the shoulders together again. Okay? Now, always do that if you can. You're going to make sure those arms slide straight up and straight back down. Ideally, the elbow and forearm should run in contact with the wall all the way up and all the way down. Okay, so get yourself set up there, have a little couple of reps. So again, get yourself against a door or a wall if you can. And then feet as far out of them as front of you as they need to be. Just make sure lower back, upper back, all the way through that spine is driven through the wall. And then you're there, you're bring your elbows down, squeeze your shoulders together and then drive them back up the wall. Exhale at the top, feel that stretch. Again, make sure that melbourne is still tucked in, more back through the wall, and then back to the start. Okay, just have a little couple reps, and then you can rest. Now, if that's too easy to start with, you're gonna press your hands slightly wider out. Okay, so instead of pressing up and down, you're gonna extend those arms out in front of you, and out along that wall, sorry, Make sure those elbows stay in contact with the wall and then back in. Okay, so if that first one is too easy, you're gonna press your hands slightly further out the wall and then back in. Okay, so just find the one that works for you. Again, you wanna feel that stretch through the upper back, through the shoulders, to the chest. Okay, now everyone looks like they've found a set up there. Now, main thing before we start, before each rep, make sure you tuck that belly down, brace the core. You're going to drive the lower back through the wall, upper back, all the way my spine is in contact with that wall again. Okay, from there, squeeze your shoulders together. And then from there, we're then going to extend off the wall. Keep your arms in contact with the wall the whole way as you can. Keep tucking those rib cages down. And then bring those elbows back down. Okay, everyone happy there? Good. So you've got five reps to make up and they can rest and we'll go for it again. Okay, five nice slow and controlled reps. Each one go through that set position again. So drive the lower back through the wall. Make sure that neck's in contact with the wall as well. And then extend the arms up. Exhale at the top. Keep those ribs tucked in. And then come back into the start. Again, if this is too easy, bring your hands slightly further out as you extend up the wall. If not, just make sure your goal is to get those elbows in contact with the wall all the way up and all the way back down. Okay, that's going to be your target for these. Make up those five nice controlled reps and then you can rest up. Okay, so again, rest here about 30 seconds. Just let those shoulders relax. No doubt we'll be burning after these ones. Let them relax slightly, and then you can then go for that again, okay? Again, main focus here, drive that little back to the wall, tuck that belly button down, tuck the rotation close to hips, and then as you come up, extend those arms, keep the lower back pinned towards the wall, and then come back in. Okay, nice and controlled there. Extend the arms all the way up, keep the arms back towards the wall if you can. Okay, when you're ready, you can make up that second set of five.
Good, nice slow and controlled. Make sure you pause for a second at the top of that rep with the arms extended nice and close to the wall. All the way through this, make sure you keep checking that that lower back is driven through the wall as well. Good, so make up that second set of five reps and then you can rest. Good, so again, main focus there is to stretch off all those little shoulders through the upper and back as well. Main transfer is going to be keeping those arms back in things like the red squat. Okay, so we're going to chuck in before, if you know you're going to go for an overhead movement, even a jerk, those will be helpful as well. Okay, so now that we've gone through our mobility protocol, we're going to go for the back breakdown. Okay, so can you all grab your TV screens, brushes, mop panels, whatever you got? Okay, so for this week, this is going to be the last week breaking down our stats. So we're going to put together all the progressions we've been through for the last four weeks. Put them all together and do more snatch movement. Okay, so just a quick recap of the movements that we've gone through. Make sure you guys have got those progressions just in your head that you can go through yourself if you're practicing. And then we'll put that all together and go for our full snatch. Okay? So, for our first one, we're going to sell in our snatch grip on that bar. Okay, so hands nice and wide to start with. Again, I do need to going to sit in your hip crease. So if you want to raise up one leg, create a right angle through that leg, that bar should stay where it is. Okay, so as far as going to sit right where your hoodie or top meets your trousers. Okay? Now, safety check there, make sure you complete a full pass through with your chosen grip. If you can't, bring those hands slightly wider. Just make sure if you need to, you can fill out that rep safely. Okay? So once you've found that set hand position, so again, the bar's going to be in your hip crease. If you can't hold the bar there and do a pass through, bring them slightly wider out, okay? Now you're letting them pop that bar onto the back of your neck. Okay, so you're just going to sit where that bar is sit for a back squat to just into your traps and your shoulders there, okay? Now we're going to go for a behind the neck strip press. So feet set under your lips, core nice and tight, and close the gap between my rib cage and my hip and then tuck my elbows underneath that bar there. Okay, from there, I'm going for five reps on my behind the next hip press. So I'm pressing up, I stay forwards, bar press up over the front of my legs, and then comes back down as control. Okay, all the way through that, squeeze the cords, control that movement, head stays control, bar press up and straight back down. Okay, go for those five reps there, again, next control. For five behind the next trick press. So again, making sure elbows stay tucked underneath that bar all the way through. Of course, stays tight. And then have a check that that bar is where you want it over the crown of your head. Good. So five reps, and then you can rest. Nice working. Okay, next one, we're going to go for our overhead squat. Okay, so we've covered these quite a lot for the last few weeks, but again, making sure the bar stays over our centre of mass. So hands in that same grip, bar is going to sit over the crown of your head as you stay in line with your head, shoulders, hips, and heels in that set position. Okay? Now from there, it's going to go back and down and constantly driving up on that bar. Weight stays in the heels, drive my knees out, keep that chest full, and I'm sitting as low as I can before my chest angle changes. Okay, so control that descent, go as low as you can before that chest starts to fall forward, and then, then stand, squeeze the boots. Again, finish that rep wash be over your shoulders, your hips, and lower your heels and neck. Okay, five, nice slow and controlled overhead squats there, and then you can rest. Greg, bring that bar a couple inches further over your head. Yeah, good, that's better. Nice team member, I stay forward all the way through. Make sure you're wasting your heels. Nice, Jen, a little bit slower down on this one. Make sure that bar stays back. Good, bar back. Good. 
That looks much better. So go for one more. Bring that bar about an inch further over your head. Good. Nice. Keep that bar there. Good. That's better. Okay, five reps, team, and then you can rest. Okay, so next one, we're going to go for our drop squats. Okay, we did this last week. Just the idea of dropping down into that squat. Okay, so setting up. Feet are going to be underneath our hips. You don't need the bar for this one. Okay, and from that self position, I'm going to pick my feet up and drop my hips. Okay, so nice and simple, dropping down into that squat. As fast as you can. Again, only drop as low as you can before that chest falls forward. Okay, so find that couple of depth in your squat, pick the feet up, and sit down into that squat. Okay, five reps in, make sure to each rep you reset those feet, and then again, pick the feet up, set them back down, make sure our hips drop nice and fast into that squat. Okay, so five drop squats there, just as we did last week. You can extend those arms forward if you need to, just that will bounce. But again, make sure when we land, we set those feet flat, get that chest tall. We're looking for the same points that we hit in our overhead squat. Good, see, really nice. Five reps there again. Make sure you bring those feet back in between each one. Okay, so our next one, we're going to go for our drop snaps. Okay, so back up to those bars. Same step as we had for the pine neck strip press. And then we're going to do the same movement as we just did in our drop squat. Okay, this time, as I pick my feet up and drop my hips, I'm going to think about extending my arms. As my feet land, again, okay, make sure we extend those arms far as you turn your head. And you're only going as low as you can, making sure we keep that chest up. Okay? So set position, feet on your hips, elbows stuck underneath that bar, go nice and tight. From there, I'm going to pick my feet up, drop my hips. When my hips land, when my feet land, sorry, I'm going to extend my arms again. Okay, so pick the feet up, drop the hips. When my feet land again, I'm going to extend these arms, drive up against the bar. Okay, go for five reps there. Between each one, bring those feet back in, take a breath. Make sure you set those elbows nice and tight underneath that bar as well. Make sure when you land, so when those feet land, you're going to drive through the bar, extend those arms, drive the shoulders up against that bar as well. Good team. So make up those five reps, then you can rest. Okay, next one. We're going to go for our hip snatch. Okay, so also known as so the bar's going to come in front of us again, and then we're going to go for our progressions and we'll work our way down to that floor snatch next. Okay? Now from there, the bar's going to be in our hip. So the hands nice and wide, bar's is in our hip crease, and then standing tall. Okay, so shoulders over hips, and then hips over heels. Now from there, put it back in see your bar if you want to. And then all I'm going to do is break my knees and break my hips. Okay, so slight flex my knees, I bump push back, and then my shoulders come over that bar. Okay, we're not front, not tight, just slight flex my knees, break my hips, hold those legs. Okay, now from there, I'm going to extend and then think about bringing that bar up to about nipple height. Okay, so again, break the knees, break the hips, hold those legs. Once my shoulders are over that bar, keep my chest up, and then you extend, bring that elbows nice and high, keep me in that bar close. Okay, so again, side on that's going to look like. Hold those legs, come down, keep that bar nice and close, extend hips, arms and leg that bar to travel up again to about mid point. Okay, it's not a pull up, power is going to come from the hips, arms and leg that bar to travel up. Okay, when you're ready, make up five reps. Good, so keep that bar nice and close, extend, keep those elbows over the bar if we can. Jen, this one don't come as low. So not all the way down to the hang. Just break in these bigger hips. Keep that bar nice and close to it. Good, that's better. Nice.
Nice team. So for this one, we don't have to worry about bringing that bar up to the hip. Just a slight break of the knees, break of the hips, load those legs, and then you can then extend, bring that bar nice and close. Good. Okay, so next one, we're going to come down into our hand snatch. Okay, so same idea, break the knees, break the hips, load those legs, and my bum goes back, my shoulders are going to stay over that bar, and then I'm going to come just above my knee down. Okay, so into that high position. Again, chest is up, shoulders are back, bar is in nice and close here. Okay, from there, I'm going to extend my legs, get as tall as I can, and then pop that bar here. Okay, so the same idea as we had for our high hand go. We're going to come down to your above the knee, get that bar and up the legs nice and close, extend the hips. High will come to the hips, arms just allow that bar to travel. Okay, when you're ready, go for five reps there again. Jeff, this time, Greg, this time, hips go a little further back, less bend to your knees. Good, so that's where I take that one again. Now, from standing tall, send your bum a little bit further back, don't bend your knees as much this time. Good, keep coming down. Good, that's better. Much better. Nice team. Five reps. Remember, control that descent. Take your shoulders over that bar. And then we're going to extend hips, get as tall as you can, get those elbows up nice and high. Nice, Tony. Next one. Just keep those elbows over that bar a little bit longer. Okay, so good position so far. But once you extend those hips, make sure the elbows stay high and don't pull back. Okay, so elbows stay over that bar as long as you can. And then we'll come back up. Okay? Nice team. So make up those five reps and then you can relax. Good, okay, so next one, we're gonna think about getting underneath that bar. Okay, so hang, snatch, for this next one. Okay, so coming into that same position again. So bum goes back, slight flex my knees, shoulders come over that bar, bar is nice and close. Okay, from there, I'm gonna extend to just what did. Bar comes up nice and close, and then I'm gonna drop down, just as I did in my drop snatch. Okay, so from right. stand tall, bar is like this, nice and close to the body, and then I'm going to drop down into my squat as my feet land. I'm going to crunch my arms up through that one. Okay? Make sure when you finish that rep, you control that little rest spot so there's no rush to get out of that squat. Pause for a second there. Make sure you're comfortable in that squat. You can then stand tall, bring your feet back in, bring that bar back down. Okay? So one rep at a time. Get as close to perfection as you can in each one of those reps. Okay? So down to our knee. Nice control, shoulders over that bar, chest up. We're then going to extend, get those elbows high, and then drop down into that full deck squat. Okay, if we can. When you're ready, team, five hang snatch. Jen, this time, when you come down to your hand, bring your shoulders about an inch further over the bar. Good team. So again, make sure those arms stay long. Power's going to come from the hips. Bar's going to travel straight up. All the way through this, that bar, staying as close as we can. Nice team. Remember when you land, press those arms up through the bar actively pressing that bar up. So I know it's just a PVC just now, but I imagine we've got 100 kilos come back down on us. Dry those arms up. Good team, really nice. Make up those five reps, and then you can rest and relax. Okay, so last one. We're gonna put it all together. Now we're gonna do the same thing. So working down from the hip, bum goes back, slight press my knees, 
So it's from Old Black Bar. And once that bar passed when he taps the way down, I'm going to slightly bend his knees just so I keep my chest up. Okay, so same position as we had before. Down to our knee. And then we're going to keep it down. Re bending those knees slightly just my chest to stay tall. Shoulders stay over that bar. Okay, now in my set position, I'm driving through the middle of my feet. Okay, so pinky toe, big toe, and heel are all in contact with the floor Okay, set up, chest is tall, bars nice and close. From there, I'm going to drive through the floor. My torso is going to rise as one, so as my shoulders rise, my leg rise at the same speed. Bars stays close, we're then going to hit that same hand position that we just went through, and then extend and drop down. Okay? So from mid chin to above your knee, nice controlled, keep that bar close. Your chest and your hips are going to rise at the same speed. And then we're then going to hit that hand position and do just what we did before in those last five reps. Okay? When you're ready for you, five full snatches. Remember, we'll just take it one rep at a time, rest as needed. Keep that quality high. Nice, Tony. Only thing, make sure you're squeezing your shoulder blades together in that bottom position. So when you start with the bar against mid chin, just squeeze those shoulder blades together and then you've got it. Jen, make sure when you bring that bar up to your hip, your knuckles stay facing down. Okay, keep that bar in close. Try not swing it out and round. Keep the knuckles down, keep those elbows high. That's going to keep the bar close. Okay? Good, that was better. Good, that bar's staying close to that. Very nice. Good, so make up those five reps and then you can relax. Greg, really nice turnover. Just make sure when you land, remember you're driving the bar through the ceiling. Okay, so you have to do the and that bar just slip back slightly. So make sure you land, press those arms up, drive the shoulders through that bar. Okay. Good, that looks strong in their sequences, now it's better. Okay, so that is our session done today. Now, any questions you've got, feel free to unmute yourself, give me a shout. That's really good.